half square triangles. They are like the bread and butter of quilting. They can stand alone to make a quilt just of half square triangles. They can be used as components in more complex blocks. They're, they're basically awesome. And there are many ways to make them. And the styles I'm making them have changed throughout the years. There are some very fast and easy modern methods, and there are some older methods that you don't see quite as often in modern quilting, but they still have their advantages. All of these half core triangle methods are, for the most part, interchangeable. You can certainly just swap out the math, cut different sized squares, and go from there. All of the math that I'm gonna go through is based on the finished size of a half square triangle. That is, once it is sewn into a quilt and all those seam allowances are already taken out. I am going to be making four inch half square triangles throughout. So all of these methods will result in a four inch finished half square triangle. The first method is the snowball method. I don't see this used very often, but it does have a few advantages. This method requires a smaller initial piece of fabric, which can be advantageous if you are working with a very tight cutting schematic or you're working from scraps and you only have so much fabric. You can also use this method to modify a block that you are already in the process of making because this method doesn't change the eventual size of that unit. So if you have a square that you have already cut for a block, you can turn it into a half square triangle using this method and it is still that same size. Now the disadvantages. And this first one can be an advantage or a disadvantage and that this method makes one half square triangle, which that might be all you're looking for. If you just need to make one or you just need to modify one little piece of a block, then that's great. You don't want to end up with little random half square triangles that might collect around your room. <laughs> the disadvantage is that it only makes one. So if you need a lot of half square triangles for a block, you're gonna have to go through this method multiple times. Another disadvantage is that this does produce scrap and they're not like nice scraps. They're like these weird triangle scraps. So let's make a snowball half square triangle. So for our snowball half square triangles, I have cut two squares of fabric and they are the finished size of my half square triangle, which is four inches. And then I have added the 0.5 inches for the seam allowance. And then also I add, which is totally optional, about a quarter of an inch to all the half square triangles that I make for trimming room. Sometimes it's an eighth of an inch, but I like to have a quarter of an inch. So in total, each of these squares is four and three quarters inches. To begin, you choose one of your squares. It does not matter which one. And we're gonna draw a diagonal line. This line obviously will not be seen from the front. So you can use whatever marking tool you prefer to use. Once you have this line drawn, put your squares right side together. Now we are gonna sew on the line, right on it. So here's where the waist comes in. We are going to take our sewn together squares and we are gonna put the quarter inch line of our ruler on our thread line, on our stitching line. And then we are gonna trim off the excess. So you're gonna end up with these two weird triangles. Here's how to save them. Take your stitching line, the line we drew from the diagonal to the diagonal, measure over half an inch and draw another line or you can eyeball this and stitch a second line of thread on that second line. So now that we've sewn our second steam line, which is just gonna give us a little bonus half square triangle, it's time to cut these apart. And you are just gonna trim right between them. So you're gonna end up with a big half square triangle, which is the one that you wanted, and a small half square triangle, which is your little bonus, so you don't end up with scraps. So now it's time to trim our half square triangle. And I have my four and a half inch square ruler here. You can use whatever ruler you like to trim, but I have one that's exactly the size, so I'm gonna use it. And this is why I added a little bit of built-in size to my initial squares, just so that I would be able to trim them and get them nice and perfect. There we go, a lovely little four inch finished, four and a half inch at this point, half square triangle. The little bonus half square triangle is always gonna be half an inch finished size smaller than the one that you were trying to make. 
So we wanted a four inch finished Hascore Triangle. We also have a three and a half inch finished Hascore Triangle. So that's Snowball Hascore Triangles. It's a great method if you are trying to modify an already existing piece of fabric. The next method is sewing together triangles to create a half square triangle unit. This method seems to be maybe a little more traditional. I see it mostly in older quilting patterns. So the big advantage to this method is the ability to mix and match prints. Many of the techniques we're gonna go over from this point on are gonna be making multiple half square triangle units at the same time, which is super convenient, but all of those half square triangles are gonna be identical. And so if you want to make a very scrappy quilt where all of the half square triangle units are different, then this method is for you because you're gonna be able to shuffle all those fabrics into different pairs so that these two fabrics can be together in this unit and then with different fabrics in other units. So the disadvantage of this method is that it's a little bit fussier. You're gonna to have to sew these bias edges together, which it's not hard. I know that I have talked a lot about bias in some of my previous videos, but it is nothing to be afraid of. Bias is just another thing to tackle in quilting. Use your starch, take it slow, it'll be fine. So to make half square triangles using this method, you are gonna start with a square of fabric that is one inch bigger than the final measurement of your half square triangle. And then you are going to cut it on the diagonal. In the snowball method, we drew a line down the center, but in this one, you're actually going to cut down the middle. Once you have your triangles cut, then it is just a matter of putting them right sides together and sewing them together with a quarter inch seam. If your machine is the type that likes to suck down these little teeny tiny triangles into it, then uh, starting with a little leader or a little scrap of fabric first will help prevent that. And once again, I oversized the initial squares by an eighth of an inch this time. Technically, a lot of the resources you'll see will have you add seven eighths of an inch to the finished half square triangle size that you want, but I just round up to that nearest one inch so that I have just a tiny little bit of trimming room. Two more half square triangles done. Now this method does make one at a time, but I had those extra triangles left because I initially cut squares. So I just went ahead and made them both. It's time for two at a time half square triangles, which I think is probably the most common method of half square triangle construction that I see in most modern patterns. Now it does have a couple of disadvantages. While it makes two blocks, they are identical. So if you want a really scrappy look to your quilt, you are gonna have the same fabrics joined together twice in your quilt. The obvious advantages to this method are that it creates two blocks. You don't have to work with any exposed bias edges. The other advantage is that there's no waste to this. You're not gonna end up with that little tiny bonus half square triangle in this method. You're gonna end up with two full-sized half square triangles. To make two at a time half square triangles, you are going to begin with two squares that are one inch bigger than the final half square triangle block that you want. Since I want four inch finished units, I'm going to begin with two five inch squares. So to do this, you draw a diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of one of your squares. You put your squares right sides together and then you are gonna sew a quarter of an inch on either side of the line. You're not gonna stitch on the line as you did with the snowball method. Another downside to the two at a time half score triangle method is that you can't use the seam guide on your machine. So my seam allowances are always a little bit more wobbly when I do the two at a time method. Now that we have our two stitching lines, it is time to cut our triangles apart and you just line up your ruler just as you did before, but instead of drawing a line, you cut on the line. Now you have two half square triangles. Let's press and trim. Now it is time to tackle, I'm not gonna say it's controversial because it's totally not, but I would say the most unusual method and that's four at a time half square triangles. So the advantages of four at a time half square triangles. 
Well, first of all, you get four half square triangles, which conveniently is the number that a lot of quilt blocks seem to require. This method also might just work better in your cutting schematic. If you are trying to squeeze every last bit of fabric, you can. The disadvantages are bias. We are gonna end up with half square triangles that have bias edges on all of the sides. Now these bias edges don't necessarily have to be a problem. They could work to your advantage. If you have a block that has half square triangles set on point within the block and then other pieces of the same fabric are kind of oriented straight on the block, then cutting your half square triangles this way will allow you to have your fabric, the print of your fabric, be going in a consistent direction in your block, which if you're working with a stripe or something that obviously has like an up and down, then utilizing this method might be just what you're looking for. So the math on this block is a little bit more involved and I think it'll be easier to explain after we make the block. We are gonna take our squares of fabric and put them right sides together. And now we are gonna sew all the way around this little unit on all four sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, I know this looks a little nutty because we have this kind of pillow envelope that we can't even get into. We're just looking at the ugly side of our fabric. So now lay your little enclosed envelope down and we are gonna cut on the diagonal both ways, like in a big X. And I think it's easier to do if you cut one diagonal and then move your ruler and cut the diagonal, other diagonal without moving your fabric. And now we have four half square triangle units. So now let's talk about the bath. So now that you see our four half square triangles laid out, you can kind of see how they fit into our original square that we needed to cut. The traditional kind of top and bottom and side measurements of our square are actually the diagonals of the square that we need to cut. So to find the size of the square we need to cut, you are gonna take the finished half square triangle unit measurement that we're looking for, which is four. You are gonna add a half an inch for the seam allowance, four and a half, and there's two of them along this diagonal either way. So that's nine, and then you need to add one inch on top of that for these seam allowances. That gives us 10. Now, if you remember back to middle school geometry, you'll remember the Pythagorean theorem. Since we know the diagonal of this square, we can find the sides. So the Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But since it's a square, we know a and b, the sides, are the same. So we need to solve for a <laughs> from two a squared equals C squared, and C is 10. So let's just do the math. C squared is 10 squared, so 100, divided by two, 50, and then you take the square root, which turns out to be something like 7.07. .07. Now, I'm not gonna cut a 7.07 .07 square. I'm gonna round up to seven and a quarter to make my life easier and give me that little bit of trimming wiggle room. So now that we've climbed that little math mountain, I am going to press my half square triangles and trim them down. And now we finally come to our last method of half square triangle construction, eight at a time. This has got to be my favorite method because it's the fastest <laughs> and I often need a lot of half square triangles when I do need half square triangle. Like most of our other methods, this begins by cutting two squares of your fabric. Now to size these squares, I promise this is gonna be easier than four at a time, you need to take your finished half square triangle block measurement, which is four for us. You need to multiply that by two, eight, and then you need to add two inches. That just kind of gives our seam allowances and our little bit of trimming wiggle room. So my blocks are 10 inches. There are a few disadvantages to this construction method, even though it's my favorite. It does require the largest piece of fabric. 
So if your cutting schematic is pretty tight, you might not have room to get a 10 inch square out of a fat quarter or another piece of fabric if you are looking to make a lot of half square triangles. This method does make eight blocks, but they are identical. Remember back when we were doing the triangle method and I talked about how you could shuffle all your colors so that you ended up with a really big variation of half square triangle units? You're gonna end up with eight here, but they're gonna be eight identical half square triangles. The final disadvantage is if you work in a small space, if your sewing area is your dining room table or a small table that you don't have like a large cutting surface on, then it can get unwieldy to make eight at a time half square triangles. Once you're working with an initial square that might measure 14 inches across or 18 inches across, that's a lot of fabric and you're gonna need a really big ruler to deal with that. That being said, this is a great method, even though there are those disadvantages. So now that we know what size our squares need to be, it is time to make the half square triangles. And I have my fabric squares right sides together, and I am just taking a ruler and drawing two long diagonal lines on the back of one of my pieces of fabric. This is just like we did for the two at a time half square triangles you are going to be sewing a quarter of an inch on either side of each of these lines. So a total of four lines of stitching. Now that we've sewn our lines of stitching, it's time to cut them apart. Now you're gonna be cutting on both of these lines and you're gonna be cutting top to bottom and side to side. So there's four cuts to make. And again, you want to just gently pick up your ruler and reposition it without moving the fabric underneath, just to make it yourself, just to make it a little easier. These cuts can be a little awkward. If you have a rotating cutting mat, it can be a little easier. Now it's time to cut top to bottom. There's a couple of reference points. You can put one line of your ruler along the bottom of the fabric, and then you just wanna go right through the center, the little peak of these triangles. And the same thing, I'm gonna use a line on my ruler to line it up with the edge of the fabric. And then make sure that I'm going right through that center. And that's it. Open this up and we have eight half square triangle units. And if you pull one kind of corner apart, you can see that this is our two at a time half square triangles. We drew the line, we sewed on either side, and and then we cut on the marked line. So if you think about it that way, the math to come up with the square size is even easier because it's just double what you would do for two at a time half square triangles. So now I have eight half square triangles that need to be pressed and trimmed. There are a few other methods to make half square triangles. There's triangles on a roll, which I've never actually personally tried. I know a lot of people really love them, but it's basically a foundation paper piecing pattern for half square triangles. They come by size, so you'll need a different roll of paper for each potential half square triangle unit you would like to make. And that's mainly the reason that I have never tried them. I feel like it would be <laughs> another thing to store in this already stuffed room. But that's just my personal preference. You may really enjoy using them and come out with great results. And that is what really ultimately matters. The final half score triangle topic I wanna to discuss is trimming. Today I was using this ruler, which is the four and a half inch square Creative Grids ruler. And I use this one a lot. I make a lot of half score triangles that are around this size. So I find it really handy to use. That being said, I tend to press all of my seam allowances open, which makes this a great ruler to use. However, if you press your seam allowances to the side, then you might wanna try this. This is the block lock ruler, and it's also the four and a half inch size. What makes this ruler really handy is, see this like frosted line? It's actually a groove in the back of the ruler, and I don't know if you guys can see that. But that groove on the back locks into the seam allowance of your block, and it makes it really stable so that you're sure to cut your half square triangle so that your seam is on the true diagonal. So you're not gonna end up cutting it so like the, the corner of your unit is kind of off to the side. Now you don't have to have these in every size like any square ruler as long as it is the same size or bigger than the square that you are needing to trim then it'll work great. So I just happen to have the four and a half inch size. So I have 17 little half square triangles here 
and I think I need to sew them together into a little bonus quilt top because I don't have enough tops to quilt right now. So guys, I finished all of my half square triangles and I assembled them into a quilt and I'll just show it to you. It's just really loud. These two prints are fairly large scale and they're bright colors and put next to each other. It's, I don't know if there's just not enough contrast or I, I don't know. There, there's a lot of reasons why this is, this is not a, a good look. So if you are going to follow along on this half square triangle adventure with me, then I suggest that you'll use a print and a blender or a print and a solid or even two solids if you want this quilt to come out to be a little bit less loud. <laughs> but that being said, at the end of the day, it is still a quilt. I'm gonna quilt it and finish it. I have a few kind of crazy quilting ideas that I might take the opportunity to try out on this quilt. but. In the end, it will be a cuddly warm quilt and my daughter will probably love it. So that is what is important. I have the half square triangle worksheet with all of the math and formulas that you need to find the sizes of initial squares to end up with the half square triangle sizes of your dreams in the description below. And there's also a download for this pattern um, also down there in the description. There are two videos popping up on the screen right now. One is a link to my block study series and the other video will be a video that YouTube thinks that you will love. So I hope that you guys have a lovely week and happy quilting. And they are wrinkly, they're wrinkly. Let me press these.